YouTube, welcome to the video. I'm actually going to sit down for right now. Um, so, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to the video. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you guys are watching this video, you're probably a disc golfer. Um, that, uh, and you're wondering what are two things I think that a lot of disc golfers are missing. Um, I'm going to explain who I am first because you know, watch this video and be like, who is this? I'm not a touring pro. I'm not a pro actually um, at all. Uh, I'm a guy who's been playing for five years. I really, really enjoy the mechanics of disc golf. Um, and I'm working on actually uh, getting myself to be at least a 900 rated disc golfer by the end of the year. I'm at like 869. Uh, once my last few tournaments go in, uh, or a sanctioned round, it's not tournaments, uh, I probably will roughly be close to 900. I'm hoping to be around that 9 or 9. 890 rated. Um, I'm at 869 right now. I shot really hot um, during uh, some uh, sanction rounds that are going up. So hopefully I will be there. If not, that's okay. Um, but I'm just a guy who's been playing for a really long time. Uh, I really enjoy fitness as well. And I love the, the form and the understanding of disc golf. So what are two things that I think uh, most disc golfers are missing? And I don't hear a lot of pros talking about this. Um, and there's two actually. So one is um, cardiovascular health. And why do I bring that up? Uh, I live in Ohio. It is very flat where I live at. Um, there's not many hills. If there are, they're little baby hills. Um, but if I go up and I play tournaments up in Michigan, uh, like Rolling Hills comes to mind. I play that one at least once a year, if not twice. Um, I think I played it three times this year. Uh, for tournaments. Uh, Independence Lake is another one. This one that's coming up is in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We're playing Tillman. Uh, Sweeney also, but uh, Tillman is a really, really hilly course. Uh, things like that. So I'm playing hillier courses, and I'm noticing, especially with the stress of tournaments and the stress of sanctioned rounds and wanting to do well, um, that I'm already stressed and I'm already breathing heavy. You add the fact that when I'm carrying my bag up these hills, um, I'm having a really hard time with bringing myself down when I'm doing my shot. So I'm gonna stand up now. So when I'm, I'm getting ready to, sh to, to shoot, I'm still kind of breathing heavy and then I'm lining it up and trying to calm myself down for me to hit the shot. Instead of having that cardiovascular health of being able to walk up hills and things that now I'm able to even easier bring myself down and focus on my shot. I'm only putting because I have a basket right there and then putters in there. Same idea with a drive. I can set back, take a breath, get ready, and throw my shot and focus on uh, all my mechanics of my shot. So that's one. The other one is... Um, for me, it is weightlifting or strength training. For me, I power lift a lot. In fact, if you see in my garage gym, which I am in right now, um, I have a bench. I have a lot of power lifting stuff. I have some strong man stuff as well. I don't have a lot of power lifting stuff. Not yet. I will. Um, but I have like stones and things like that. And I watch my channel. I deadlift a lot. I squat a lot. Things like that. Um... I don't squat heavy because I'm not that good yet, but I'm working on it. What I mean is I do it on a regular basis. Um, and there's something actually that I have thought of that I I have uh, explanations of why, and I'll explain that in a second, but let me explain why I think you need we need strength training in disc golf. So, if you power lift, you understand chain, okay? If you crossfit, you also probably understand chaining. What chaining is, if you, if you do martial arts as well, you also understand training. Chaining. So, what is chaining? Chaining is being able to get everything together from the tip of your foot to the crown of your head. I'm going to use a deadlift as an explanation, or as uh, an example. If I'm deadlifting, right, and I let, and I don't brace my core, they call it bracing, where they make their stomach really big and they push everything in. Okay, if I don't brace correctly, if I let my lower back sag, right, if I don't push my shoulders back, if I'm not in perfect form, I can't explode fast enough to get the weight up. 
and deadlift is a lot different than a, a disc golf shot. And people will say, well, you need to be loose when you're throwing a disc. Somewhat true. If I'm really trying to, the disc is not going to go anywhere. However, just like a deadlift, if everything is not in tight and everything is not locked in, I'm not going to be able to, like, to produce the force off the ground to get it all the way up. And how do I learn that? From deadlifting, from pushing off the floor. Okay? A lot of other movements are that as well. Squatting is the same way, right? If I'm not pushing with my whole foot when I'm coming out of the hole, for those of you who don't know what the hole is, it is basically that 90 degree right here. Um, if I'm not, you know, pushing, pushing through the ground and locking everything in, again, uh, bracing and everything, I'm not going to be able to pull as much weight. It is the same thing with a disc golf shot. Maybe not here, right? This is all good. But when I get to here, I need to learn how to chain everything. Push from my push from the ground, push from my heel, all up into my hips, and into my shot. You've probably heard, you know, pros talk about that. They talk about that being everything in here. How do you train that? I think you can train that by weightlifting, okay? I said, I just kind of mentioned squat and deadlift. Um, I don't CrossFit enough to really talk about CrossFit. I would believe so. Um, as I have done CrossFit squats, you really, again, have to learn how to brace, how to hold it all the way up. Strongman, as I do stones, again, same thing. You have to really learn how to brace and get everything in and still move. So that's why I point that out, is I think that we should start really outside of the course, doing certain things, to get our bodies moving and teach us things like that. Um, I have noticed that I have been really powerlifting that uh, the me, me bracing into my shots has helped me a lot. Gained a little bit of distance and a lot of accuracy. Um, I also, like I said, have some reasons why I believe this. So if you watch Foundation Disc Golf, you've seen Paul's uh, little uh, big, big shed that he practices in. He's got, he's got baskets, he's got his discs, he also has a squat and a bench rack, or he has a, a bench and a big squat rack. In fact, I'm really jealous. I wish I had that. But I think he has that, right, because I think he understands. The, uh, you know, the more, since you can't really practice a disc golf shot without throwing a disc, you have, you know, vans you can use to do stuff like this. Russian twists on the floor probably help because they get you to understand this. There's no real way to understand to, to practice a disc golf throw. But if I can teach myself to chain from the ground and other movements when I'm throwing a disc, it's the same thing. So um, there's that. There's also, if you look at disc golf strong, which I've never done, I've never paid to do their disc golf strong. Um, I've done the stretches, uh, their free stretches. They have some great information on stretching and whatnot. They also have, you know, um, workout moves that you can do. I know like a Bulgarian split squat is one of them. So they have uh, weight lifting in it. Now you don't have to go super heavy, but I think that doing stuff like that, again, will help you with chaining. Um, I hope this isn't repetitive. I am going to put this video out, but I hope you guys get something from this. And even if it's you know, just working on body weight squats. As long as, for me personally, as long as you're, you're training chain. Body weight squats don't work so much for me because I lift weights. Um, but I think there is something that is beneficial. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to actually work out uh, because I've only gotten one workout this week. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to end this video. As I always say at the end of my video, always go for your goals, whether it's 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 3 hours. Always do something every day towards your goals. All right. Peace.